The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. I welcome you to the webinar on Power BI Embedded in Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. The learning objective for today is Entity Store in Dynamic 365 for Finance and Operation, Development of Entity Store, Browsing Entity Store for Data Validation, Deployment of Entity Store, Power BI in Dynamic 365 for Finance and Operations. Under that, Enabling Power BI Embedder in Dynamic 365 Finance and Operations, Connecting Entity Store to Power BI using Direct Query, Deploying Power BI through LCS, Showing Power BI Reports Embedded in Dynamic 365 for Finance and Operations, Configuring Dynamics 365 Workspaces for Embedding Power BI Reports, Deploying Entity Store and Power BI Reports to Production. Now let's have a look on what is Entity Store. Entity Store is a feature that will enable an administrator or a Power BI user to create a data store dedicated for reporting and analytics. Entity Store is AXDW database. Entity Store enables a user to choose entities for finance and operations to be moved into an Entity Store. Entity Store enables scheduling incremental refresh jobs with the use of AX batch frameworks. Entity Store uses in memory clustered column store index functionality built into SQL Server to optimize reporting and queries. Customers have the ability to use Power BI direct query models along with Entity Store to enable high volume, near real-time analytical reporting over large volume of data, as shown. In this diagram, we see that there is transactional database. This database is nothing but our main operational database. Data from this database is plucked into a container and using direct query, this data is published to Power BI dashboards and are used for reports. Now let's look at let's have a look at benefits of Entity Store. Entity Store also lets Power users create Power BI direct query reports. You can create Power BI reports over large data volumes. Reports do not have to be updated by using Power BI. When Entity Store is updated, reports reflect the latest data. Data doesn't leave your Dynamics 365 for finance and operations environment because no data is cached in the Power BI service. You can also consume aggregated data entities programmatically. Now let's move on to development of Entity Store. Before you begin, you should make sure what the business need is. Depending on your business, your case, choose the correct entity. For example, if we are developing sales report, we need to be around sales table, views, or data entities. Prerequisite, general knowledge of Microsoft Windows. You need to acquire the access, the environment using remote desktop and be provisioned as an administrator. General knowledge of basic navigation within Visual Studio with knowledge of C Sharp or X++ is mandatory. Steps to create Entity Store. You need to add three important and main items into your project. Aggregate measure, dimensions, views or table that depends on your requirement. Let's have a look on a use case. To create an entity store for retail sales report. For our case, we need to prepare report for retail sales based on 
sales amount and sales quantity by product. In the following diagram, you can see how we add new items into a project. Adding aggregate measure. Aggregate measure are nothing but numbers which can be aggregated, counted or distinct. In our case, sales amount and sales quantity are the measures. Aggregate measure falls under analytics which consist of measures and dimensions. Let's have a look on steps to create aggregate measure. First, you need to add aggregate measure to your project. Once your aggregate measure is added to your project, you need to assign table or views to your aggregate measure. You need to add new measures to your aggregate measure. You need to set appropriate properties for these measures. In our case, we have taken net amount, net amount with tax and net quantity. You need to set the property of these measures. The ag default aggregate can either be sum, distinct or count. The next comes dimensions. Steps to create new dimension. You need to add a new dimension to your project. You need to assign a table or a view to the dimension. When you expand the attribute node of the new dimension, several attributes would be created by default. The system has also created a dimension key based on the unique indexes of the table. You can add additional attributes. Now, from the solution explorer, drag the newly created dimension to the aggregate measure. The aggregate measure will have system generated dimensions already present by default. Select the dimensional field and make appropriate relations. Important step before you deploy your entity store. Always browse the table or the view created to assign the dimension to validate the data. This ensures the field you wish to have in your entity store. This will help you have a better view about your entity store and save your time from traversing back and forth. Now let's move on to the deployment of entity store to Dynamic 365 for finance and operations. Deployment on dev environment. Deployment of entity store is done automatically when the project containing aggregate measure is built and synchronized successfully. Deployment on sandbox or production environment. Deployment of entity store on sandbox and production environment is done through LCS. Following are the steps. First, create deployable packages for your model. Second, log in to your LCS and upload this package to your asset library. The process is same as you deploy other deployable packages. Once the deployment is successful, the entity store will reflect in system administration under entity store. Refresh the entity store in Dynamic 365 for finance and operations. So this image depicts the creation of deployable package for your model. Under Dynamics 365, go to Deploy and Create Deployable Package. The entity store in Dynamics 365 for finance and operation will be visible under System Administration under Entity Store. When you click on Entity Store, the list of aggregate measures created would be listed as follows. Click on the entity store that you have created and click on refresh button on the top left. Now let's proceed to 
Power BI reports development in Entity Store. Develop reports in dev environment with direct query. Steps are as follows. Open Power BI Desktop, click on Get Data and select SQL Server. On opening this tab, select the local database, click on Direct Query and proceed to OK. Select the database AXDW as we had previously mentioned that AXDW is your entity store. When you navigate to AXDW, select the dimensions and aggregate measure and develop the report. Save the report with appropriate names. Upload these reports to your LCS project asset libraries under Power BI. Let's have a look on how to deploy Power BI reports to Sandbox and production. You need to do few configurations of Power BI in operations. First is configure your LCS project within Dynamics 365 for operations. To do that, navigate to System Administration, go to System Parameters and then proceed to Help tab. You will be asked to connect to Lifecycle Services. This operation is mandatory. It enables Dynamic 365 for operations to establish a trusted connection to LCS using your user credentials. Click on click here to connect to Lifecycle Services. On successful connection, you will be able to choose a set of LCS project from the drop down menu. Select the LCS project. The second configuration that you would be doing is enabling your Power BI. To enable your Power BI, you need to register Dynamics 365 for operations deployment as an web app. Steps are as follows. Log in to your Power BI account. There are some fields you need to fill in. First, app name. You can give any suitable name. Second, app type. The app type would be server side web app. Redirect URI. This will be your instance URL with open authentication at the end. For example, HTTPS followed by your URL followed by open authentication. Home page URL. This will be your instance URL. Choose the APIs to access. Then hit register app. This will create a client ID and a client secret, which we are going to input inside Dynamics 365. Here is an image which shows the registration of Power BI. The last two fields are your client ID and your client secret. Make a note of these two as we'll be using this to input in Dynamics 365. To deploy Power BI files, we navigate to System Administration. From there, we go to Deploy Power BI Files. Click on Deploy Power BI Files. Here, you will be asked to authorize Power BI. Click on Authorize Power BI. Click on Deploy Power BI Files. Embedding Power BI Reports in Operations. Power BI Reports can be added to any workspace that contains a links section. Once Power BI reports have been deployed successfully, you can pin them to your Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations workspace. To do this, steps. Open a workspace in Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. Click the Options tab. 
under that click open report catalog once you click on open report catalogs the list of all the reports will be visible to you the list of reports come from the reports that you have in your power bi account this is a sample of reports that would be visible to you click on the report which you desire to open when you click on ok those reports will be on your workspace as we had our case saying we need to prepare a report on retail sales this is an example on how we have created a report on retail sales using entity store so this is how we finish our webinar thank you everyone do you have any questions muted unmuted if you have any questions or queries you can mail us to cloudfront mail us to support at the cloudfronts.com the recording of this webinar shall be available on the following links provided thank you